Hey everybody, Cigna here with the Bullish Bears. This is a continuing video series about building a trading plan. And in this video, we're going to talk about accounts. Some of the things that we need to talk about when it comes to trading accounts are what limitations you have, depending on what type of account you have and how big that account is what the goal is with the uh, account and then we'll look ahead at the next video in the series so when it comes to dealing with strategies we really got to recognize the limitations of our account right we need to recognize what those limitations are we need to understand how those limitations affect us and then Perhaps we can find ways of avoiding those limitations or working around them to reach our goals. This video is continuing the conversation we began last week when we discussed and introduced these topics that I'll be flipping through here. We'll discuss account size and trade goals in this video, and these other topics can be found in the Bullish Bears Learning Community Center. So in the previous video, we talked about, just as an introduction, account sizes, trade goals, trading time frame, how long you want to be in a trade, what to trade, entry conditions, trade management, exit criteria, back testing a trade strategy, paper trading that strategy, recording the trades, reviewing your records, and those topics are what each of these different videos are going to be on. This video will discuss account size in detail. This topic is something we will need to visit again later when we branch out into beta weight portfolios and delta neutral portfolio tactics. But we still need to get into some various aspects with some detail. This is absolutely the most important part of developing a trading plan. In the first video, I touched upon these topics when looking at your account, account size, uh, large accounts or small accounts. There is no such thing as a mid-sized account. You either are limited by the funds that you have, which means you have a small account, or you have an account so large that you're never limited by what you want to trade. Right? And that's the two distinctions. So small accounts. What are some of the problems with small accounts? Let's see, uh, thinking that your small account doesn't really matter since you're not really risking more than you can afford to lose. That's a problem that I have seen often when talking to new traders. They say, oh, you know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, I, it's a small account. It's not a lot of money. It's all right. If you don't respect your account, or you think that, ah, oh, well, you know, who cares? It's just a little bit of money. It's okay that I don't follow the procedures. I don't follow my strategy. That I don't complete the uh, the trade all the way through. And if, if you just don't have any respect for the account, you're doomed to lose again and again. And you'll also start developing bad trade tactics. Or another mistake, thinking that you're free to trade the same tactics and the same strategies as a large account. That's absolutely not true. You have to come to the realization that with a small account, you just cannot trade the way that a big account does. There are going to be a lot of trades that are really, really good setups, really good trades, and you can't take it. You can't participate. You have to sit it out and just recognize it for what it is that it's just a trade you can't do. Another problem with small accounts, PDT. Even though I'm a, uh, into swing trading, there are many times that I hit my target profit goal in the same day that I open the trade. And at that point, I'm opening and closing a trade in the same day. I've just activated a PDT trade. You get too many of those in too short of a time and you can risk shutting down your account, right? Your broker can shut you down. Other issues with small accounts, not taking trades that suit a small account, right? There are trades that are big trades that you really shouldn't be doing on a small account. And even if you can afford 
with your small account to take the trade. There are many trades that you shouldn't. You should just step back and recognize that, hey, the risk reward on that is too large, right? Or looking at a trade and uh, recognizing that a full loss from that trade could wipe you out, right? And that trade isn't suited for you. Not taking profit at defensive levels. Uh, even though you're in a small account and perhaps wanting to grow it quickly, you still need to take profits out of the trade, right? You need to find a way to be able to scale out of a trade, which is hard. I know it's hard with a small account. But if you can't scale, then you need to just take profits at defensive levels, right? Uh, that when we're developing trade strategies, a part of the strategy is managing our exits. And, and managing your exit comes down to getting risk out of the trade, right? Locking in profits. Another problem that I've seen with new traders when it comes to their accounts is thinking that your small account cannot generate funds. That is absolutely not true. Depending on the broker that you have and how big your small account is, you could get margin. For an example, on Robinhood with $2,000, you can get $2,000 of margin, which would give you $4,000 of buying power. Now, to me, that was a large account. I started with $300, right? So when I hit 2000 and flopped over to margin, I basically doubled my buying power overnight. And I felt that uh, I could take any trade I wanted, right? Because from my perspective, I was dealing with a large account at that point. But you can generate funds with a small account. Um, you can't generate an income with a small account, but you can you can most definitely compound your wins and grow your small account and create profits with a small account. The way to do that is by building a trade strategy that uh, affords you that opportunity. So small accounts are not the only uh, accounts that have issues or that have limitations. I've noticed that People with big accounts also struggle with a lot of uh, various problems. One, thinking that your money gives you an edge. I have noticed a lot of new traders that come into the community. They have very large accounts, and they seem to believe mistakenly that they carry some kind of edge in their trading because of the, uh, the size of their account, and it's absolutely not true. You are not a better trader just because you have a large account, right? And and uh, you have no edge because of your account. Now, your large account can do things that a smaller account can't do, right? And so large accounts have an edge. But you as a trader do not have edge just because you have a large account. Thinking that you can average out of a bad trade. Um, if you don't know what average out is, I certainly am not going to be the one to share that with you. It's a very bad trade tactic. Um, it can't be done in small accounts. It can be done in large accounts, but it is not a good way to manage a trade that is going bad. It can pull your bacon out of the fire, so to speak. But it is a bad habit, it is a bad tactic, and it is a bad trade strategy. It's bad logic to even try to average out of a trade. So I don't want to encourage or promote averaging out. But I've seen traders with a large account average out of a bad trade instead of recognizing and developing trade strategies and trade tactics that put them into good trades they continue to deal with sloppy trade entries, sloppy trades, sloppy trade tactics, and then they try to save their bad trade by averaging out. Thinking that you're able to ignore small losses or reset your win rate. I've seen this with large accounts. People will say, "Ah, oh, well, you know what? Um, that was just that was just practice. We'll just count those losses as a learning experience. I'll just start over." You can do that, but if you just keep starting over without learning from your mistakes, 
and accepting responsibility for your trades, you're not going to grow personally as a trader. So treat every trade with the respect that it deserves based on the idea that uh, you are developing something and you want to give it your best and you want to do uh, as good as you can and grow and learn as a trader, right? So don't treat any trade just as something that, oh, well, I was, I was just playing with that one. You know, it don't really count. Let's just start over. I'll start, I won't record that one. Uh, don't, don't do that. Don't minimize your participation, right? This is, nobody can, can help you in trading. And as you get better and better throughout your lifetime, you're going to look back and realize that all the successes that have come were from your hard work, from your dedication and from your efforts. So don't minimize your efforts. Be proud of what you do and treat the things that you do with pride. Other problems with large accounts, not setting aside capital for a specific strategy. I've seen people uh, use their entire account, even large accounts, all on a specific strategy without uh, itemizing, breaking down, or setting aside certain quantities of funds to say, okay, maybe I'll put a, a quarter of my trades into a uh, duration trade. I'll put half uh, of my funds into you know, uh, capital growth and I'll put the other quarter into cash, just taking, you know, very short term swing trades or day trades, not setting aside capital for a specific strategy doesn't give you, uh, structure, right? And you need to be able to contain your own impulses. Another problem, believing that you can just refill the capital that you decided to use for a specific strategy. So looking back at the last bullet point there, uh, if you do set aside capital and you say, okay, I'm going to try out this um, uh, dead cat bounce strategy and I'm going to use $3,000. And then you start out pretty good. You have some losses. It gets a little rough and, and you just decide, you know what, hey, I'm going to just reset that. I'll just throw in another three three $3,000. We're going to try this again. And... Uh, you know, we'll just we'll forget that last one called a learning experience. Don't don't treat each account like, oh, well, you know, it's just a couple of thousand for this strategy. Uh, it's no big deal. It comes back again to, to giving it the respect that uh, it deserves because it's your attention, it's your time, and it's your effort going into it. Another issue that I see people with large accounts having is their... The thinking that you should be banking some really big wins with your big trades, right? Um, just because you have a large account doesn't mean you should even be taking big trades. Most of the biggest names in the business that I've uh, paid attention to, Sam, Tom Sosnoff is, is one. Um, Don Kaufman is another. There's quite a few names out there. Um, uh, Options Alpha, uh, Kirk they don't take big positions. They'll trade often. They'll trade a lot. They'll have a lot of money in play, but they don't put a lot of money on any one single individual trade, right? You can bank some really good, really big amount of money on your trades. That doesn't mean that you have to get into a big trade to do it, right? Uh, the other side of that coin is thinking that you should be aiming for big targets or that you should have large wins. Um, in doing a lot of research on uh, on the average profit taking in, uh, in our business, I came across names like Warren Buffett and Carl Icahn. Uh, it turns out that Carl Icahn has actually got a better, uh, or a, not better, but a higher year-over-year uh, -year profit than Warren Buffett does in trading. And Carl Icahn sets a precedent at around 30 to 31%, which means he's pulling funds out of the trade before 31%, and he's closing the trades at around 31%, right? That's absolutely amazing. This guy is, you know, a famous trader. He's a big, big name in the business. 
and he's not the only one, but he was just one that I, I uh, found easily. He's generating these very uh, large wins, right? Because, I mean, look at his account size. But his target profit for the entire trade is done by 30 to 31%. I mean, that's absolutely amazing. So the idea that, you know, you need to hit 200% or 300% or 400% in every one of your trades just because you're trading in a large account, that that's a mistake. Getting profits out of the trade at 20, 30, 40%, there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's absolutely an acceptable level. But so many traders see posts on social media where people are hitting 200, 300, 400, 500% profit in their trades and people think that uh, that that's the norm rather than the expectation. So not taking profit at defensive levels kind of rolls back into the, the last bullet point there. You want to get money out of the trade. Every single trade that you put on could be wiped out at any time. Uh, the market could absolutely skew against you in a moment's notice. A random tweet, something happens, um, if the Fed comes out and says something, anything in, a, in this hypersensitive market could send the market in one direction or another in an extreme level. So the sooner that you can get profit out of the trade, the better. Having a trade strategy where you already know where your defensive levels are at means that you won't be reacting to anything in the market. You'll be following your trading plan. Uh, taking profits at 25% is something that I do uh, often, regularly. That doesn't mean I close the trade at 25%, but it does mean that I'll get risk out of the trade. I'll get profit, and I'll lock that in and let the trade continue on uh, if it's, you know, if, if that's in the future for it. But not taking profits. So goals. When we're trying to develop a trading strategy and we're looking at account, we need to develop account goals. We need to understand what the goal is, understand how to reach that goal, and then understanding the issues or the limits that might be uh, a challenge for us. Account goals. Four types of accounts that uh, we're going to cover here, but this is most definitely not all the different kind of accounts out there. Maybe your goal with this account is growth. Maybe you're opening an account that's small and, and your entire goal is to grow it into a bigger account. Another account goal is an income account. Things like covered calls or, you know, duration credit spreads, uh, ex-dividend payments, some type of trading strategy that can consistently and profitably pay you money that you can withdraw from your account. So an income account, an account that will generate income to pay your bills, put food on the table, Another type of account, retirement account. So uh, 401k is something that comes to mind right off the bat. I, I opened a small retirement account with Tastyworks. Um, you need to know the limitations that come with a retirement account. You know, you, you can't pull funds out of it all willy-nilly. Um, you're pretty much going to just leave the funds in that account and let them compound in their growth, right? So recognizing that the entire goal of that account is just to save money, build up a retirement fund. And then one more account that has goals that I love is a testing account. Um, opening up a small account or setting aside a small amount of funds to do strategic testing of a strategy. We can paper test all we want. We can paper trade a strategy and back test it and run it through the ringer, but at some point, we just got to go live with it. Using a testing account is uh, is a way to diversify and divide your account from your testing account, right? And um, having an account that is for testing can help you break down all the goals and all the criteria that you need to reach your goals. So when looking at uh, goals with accounts, account growth has been one that I've done quite often. 
the uh, the idea behind account growth is fast turnaround trades, low risk trades, time based trades, and uh, having a trading strategy that is uh, allowing you to frequently get into the market. Right? It can't be a, a trade strategy that you know might present you one trade every other week or so. Right? It needs to be a trade strategy that is always continuously offering you a trade whenever you have free cash so that you can continue to get into and out of the market quickly to help grow your account faster. A really great example of account growth goals is opening an account with a small fund and specifically focusing upon growing that account larger. I've done this quite a few times and actually started with a small account in my trading career. Each new account I have opened since I began trading has been done with funds from a previous market account. Recently, I wanted to trade the new futures products, uh, the new micro futures contracts that came out May 6, 2019. So I deposited money into a Robinhood account. I started with $500 and my goal was to reach over $1,000. Once I hit that goal, I withdrew the $1,000 and opened a futures account on NinjaTrader. They were offering new packages for trading micro futures and you needed $400 to begin trading them. I don't really want to trade micro futures, but I recognize that I don't have the experience with trading intraday futures and I do not have experience trading uh, the futures strategy that I had developed or that I had found I, I didn't develop. So I now do trade micro futures with the goal of growing that account large enough to trade mini futures. And you see how my goals for the account uh, become very focused. I wanted to grow my account. I, I didn't need these funds. I do not need to win a trade. I do not have a large time frame to trade with. These factors help me focus on the type of trades I want to get into and that helped me recognize what trade strategy I wanted to build. Account growth is a special type of goal. We want to see quick returns. We want to see quick growth. So we need a strategy that has a quick turnaround. We need a strategy that can offer us trades every day, any day, up days, down days, sideways days, ranged markets, trend markets, no trend markets. And that's the kind of strategy that you want to build or that you want to use when your goal is a growth account. You got to ask yourself, does the strategy take care of these needs? Income. An income goal is completely different. With an income goal, we need to see consistent gains. If this account is going to be our income, we need to make sure that we're getting paid in predictable and timely timeframes. If we need these funds to pay our bills and to put food on the table, we need to make sure that we have a strategy that is consistent and can provide for our family. When our account goal is income, the trades we take and the strategy we use for those trades have to become part of an overall inventory of trades that we carry in our accounts. We want to focus on an entire portfolio of trades that pays us income through dividends, covered call trades, or through various income trade setups. It's not a strategy that can be done with a small account. This is strictly something that can only be done with an account big enough to carry the trades. However, you can grow this account as you grow your trades. This income account can become a very large account through compounding, and through injections of capital throughout its lifetime. What does that mean? It means that you can have the goal of creating an income account and can then spend your attention on developing an income-producing account through time. Retirement. When I think of retirement accounts, I think of things like a 401k or other such accounts. The trade strategies we want to use in this type of an account would be a large mixture of strategies. The real limitation that comes from a retirement account comes from the restrictions placed by the brokerage. Some brokers will not allow various option spread strategies to be done with a, quote, cash account or a retirement account. 
Other than that restriction, the types of strategies to grow a retirement account really does not have limitations beyond the individual risk profile and beyond the capital within the account. These strategies can be short-term, medium-term, long-term, duration, or intraday trades. When looking at strategies for a retirement account, we want to really focus on the trades that use our time and our funds in a way that is worth our efforts, but also our higher probability trade setups. There are a variety of trades we can use to grow a retirement account, and this type of account really is diverse when it comes to the type of strategies that we could use. Testing. A testing account is something unique. While this type of account does not have to be small, we want to trade it with a small account mindset. We do not want to risk a lot of capital on strategies we are testing. It would be great if we could find all of our answers from paper trading, and that just isn't true. All right? Eventually, we have to take a trade strategy live. A testing account is something that requires extra trade records. But the strategies used in a testing account are, of course, trades that we have not fully developed or strategies that we do not have full background data on. I love a testing account, but it is very time consuming. The volume of journaling and trade recording is difficult to maintain on a daily basis. When it comes to a testing account, we really have to record so much information that on a day-to-day -day basis, it's a struggle to keep up with. So let's recap. As you can see, there are a variety of goals for accounts, and this list is not the only type of account goals out there. I know that I cannot discuss all the types out there, and my goal here was not to share all the types of account goals. My intention was to get you to think about the type of account you have now, to get you thinking about what your account has been used for, and even perhaps to get you thinking about the future when you may want to create a new account with a new goal in mind. You need to take the time and the opportunity to really come to a solid understanding of what you, what you want out of your uh, trading and what you want out of your trading account and then focus your energy on developing trade strategies that help you reach your goals. This can save you a lot of time and can help you stay on track. It also helps you sort through the millions of trades and trade strategies out there and helps you pick ones that are right for the type of account you have. So thinking ahead, what are the goals? What markets are you going to trade? How will you rank your trades? How will you track your trades? How will you review the trades to make corrective action? What is the process you will use to prove you can do it and have earned the right to trade the strategy live? What are the drawdown rules? What is the failure limit that will send you back to paper trades? What education do you need to accomplish all of this? What tools do you need to make this a strategy that is functionable? How much should you use per trade? How much are you willing to lose per trade? How many of these trades can you have at any one time? Can I scale into the trade strategy? Can I scale out of the trade strategy? So let's stop here for a moment. What types of trades can we do in a small account? What types of trades can we not do in a small account? Really, the only limits placed on a small account come from a lack of funds and a restriction placed on it by the broker. A broker limits a small account in a lot of ways. No margin is offered. And then there's the issue with pattern day trading and no trades are allowed that cannot be covered. The things that come immediately to mind are things like covered calls and strangles and straddles. These three trades cannot be done with small accounts. We really want to focus on the strategies that allow us to participate and still fit into the rules that we apply or the restrictions that we place on our account. With a small account, we can identify the goals for our account. Retirement, growth, testing. 
We cannot develop an income from a small account. It's, it's just not possible. It is possible to have an account goal like retirement, testing, and growth, but each of those goals have restrictions and limitations that need to be recognized as well. The good thing about understanding these limitations is that we can avoid things that may be a waste of our time. All right, so what are the issues with a large account? There really isn't any. The issue comes from the trader who has a large account. Imagine that, right? A small account holder that is a new trader has limits from the broker and has limits due to the skill of the trader. A large account holder that is also a new trader only has the limitations of a new trader. A lack of skill and a lack of experience. The danger comes from the tactics large account holders try to employ when things go wrong. Ignoring the reason for the losing trade, throwing more money at a losing trade, trading overly large trades without recognizing the dangers and the risks. Does this strategy help me reach my goals? Is this strategy a high probability trade? Has this strategy been back tested and have I perfected the trade? There are a lot of trade strategies to contend with. Recognize that there are already a lot of fully developed trade strategies and you do not need to develop a new one. You could choose to just take advantage of the work of tried and tested trade strategies and there are a lot of good reasons to do this. With a strategy that has been around for a long time, you can identify the probabilities of the trade, you can pick strategies that will fit your account, your skills, your life, your lifestyle, and your trade time. The bad reasons in taking trade strategies that were developed by others is the skill level that may be required, the money to buy those strategies, and a personal belief in the trade strategy. Often I see new traders running out to get a hold of the next new indicator, the next strategy, the next shiny object. After two or three days, maybe a week, the trader gives it a try and stops after the first or second loss. They do not take the time or the effort to really dial into what the entire strategy is based on. They do not become a master of the craft and they do not trust the trade. If you build your own trade strategy, you will learn more about it as the building part progresses. You will become a master at the various aspects that the trade is based upon, and it will fit your risk level, your time frame, and your trust. So that's really where we're at there on this uh, portion of the, of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.